Welcome to I Cook, You Measure. I'm your host, Jen Mueller, and the guest measurer today is the tallest person who has ever set foot in my kitchen, former NBA player Spencer Hawes. Spencer, I'm standing on my tippy toes. I can't even get I can take my shoes off. I don't... <laughs> I don't think that's going to help a lot. I know. Um, I, please, here's the only thing that I ask of you. Do not look at the dust that's on the top of my countertops or my stove hood, because I can't see it, so it does not bother me in no the very judgment, least. No judgment, but I can help you out with that afterwards. <laughs> Great. I'm going to put him to work uh, cleaning. Spencer helped to pick the menu today. Here's what we are going to make. We are going to make foil packets that have zucchini noodles, a little marinara sauce, and some shrimp in them. You know me. If you have watched any number of episodes of the show, Spencer, we always cook with wine. How do you feel about that? Uh, I'm wondering why it's not open yet. Well, that is because that's your job. So if okay. you could do me a favor right. and open that up. That is a wine from Chandler Reach. They are a Washington winery, a Washington winemaker. This is an Italian wine, however, and this is going to be Sangiovese, which I thought it's a, a lighter to medium bodied red wine. When you have shrimp and pasta, I might think white, but because the marinara sauce, we want to think a little bit red, but the zucchini noodles make it a little lighter. I'm really just justifying why we're opening wine. I don't really need to justify why I'm opening wine, do I? No, it's, it's the afternoon. It's the <laughs> it could be the morning. Why do I need to justify by time of day when I'm having wine? The day ends in a Y, so yeah. we're gonna fire it up. Yeah, you know what I'm really most intimidated by right now, and it is not your height, or the ability to open wine like a skilled professional. It is the fact that you brought your own apron. My smock, yes. This <laughs> This was a uh, God, was a Christmas present from my future mother-in-law. So, shout out Wendy. We're putting them to use. Okay. And did she buy that because you asked? Because she knows that you're a mess in the kitchen. What's um, happening with that? Well, we got matching ones. Well, not quite matching. Okay. How's that? Uh, and yeah, they get stashed in the cupboard. And then I was thinking about what do I need to prepare for this experience. Almost brought my knives. I thought that might have been a little overkill, but. Do you have a traveling set of knives? Uh, they infrequently travel, but when you, when you got to bring out the big guns. I really should have done some research before I That's asked okay. you we to. Won't, this, we by the way, is delicious. Is you should good? pour All yourself right. some, yes. Um, OK, so how serious of a cook a are pour. you? That's a really good pour. Um, That's a gen size pour right there. Pretty serious. Uh, I would say. After I got, here, cheers, first of all. Cheers. Delicious. This is going to work. Um, after I got fired from the <laughs> NBA, I was really bored and looking for something. Started kind of out as something to do, but something that, you know, gives you fulfillment, a little bit of a challenge. And my mom always told me, if you can read, you can cook. So I started reading recipes and playing around with stuff, and then it just kind of all went from there. We are going to use a recipe out of, of course, you know her, you love her. It is one of my favorites, Skinny Taste. Here is what I have written in my recipe book, excellent and quick. We are going to wrap this all up in a foil, like, Hershey Kiss okay. and pop it in the oven. All right. So once we prep the sauce and we get the zoodles going, just makes me laugh every time I say that. I'm going to have you work on the sauce first. Though. Okay. Um, it's going to be super easy in the oven. So here's what I'm going to have you do first. Yeah, we're going to dress up some marinara sauce. You can certainly make it from scratch if you want. I don't know that I always want to. Don't so always have time. I don't always have time. So I'm going to have you give that shallot a dice. Okay. Let's see how these knife skills are, because sometimes they're, they're not suspect. Great. They're not great. But well, you haven't waved a knife around. So that is a big plus. I am literally standing on my tippy toes right now, but I'm watching you. How much does your back hurt when you're in the so kitchen? So that is actually that is actually an issue. And uh, if I ever get around to remodeling my kitchen, which I'm getting a lot of pressure on, that's gonna we're going to the standards 36. Well, whatever this is. I, think I mean, this is hip height for me. That's 39. not even close. We're going to like 42 or 44. But then nobody else would want to cook in your kitchen. I would end up with elbow problems and shoulder problems. That's their problem. I, I have a buddy that complains about my couch being too big and how inconvenient it is for him. And I said, well, think about, let's see, 
16 years of my life that I went to school and every desk that I fit in yeah. didn't. So it's revenge time. I was always upset that there were no left-handed desks in school. I can only imagine how you felt just not having a big enough desk. Yeah, when you stand up quickly and it comes with you, that's kind of when you're <laughs> like, all right. So are we... We're going to add that in here. Right. Sorry, a little nope. spill. That's, that's Cookie, quite all right. Cooking's messy. Cooking is messy. Um, and this is a real kitchen. We're really cooking. Uh, I know that you could do garlic on your own. I don't really like to. I've never seen this, but I like this. What? Oh, yeah, just squirt a little bit of that in there. Like, we don't even have to be super, we don't have to be super exact. Yep, perfect. Never heard of too much garlic, so. Oh, you're one of those people. Yes. Not a cilantro guy, but a garlic guy. Yeah, keep the vampires away. But <laughs> in all of the cities that you played in, which city had the best food? Great question. Uh, we're gonna go right away, we're gonna go backwards. So it wasn't Milwaukee, it <laughs> certainly wasn't Cleveland, with all due respect. Um, it was not Sacramento, I'm not missing. The food in Charlotte was great, but that's kind of a unique, it's yeah. not for everybody. Um, Philly, LA, kind of a, depends what you're looking for, but. Yeah, what did you look for most often? Uh, Philly, I was big into Italian. Okay. The same place every day. Wait, uh, same place every day? Yeah, Labuca. I hope it's still there. I haven't been to back in a while, but that was my pregame meal every day. And L.A., there was a little more, a few more options than yes. down by the beach. So I'm big on tacos in L.A. Yeah, see, that's kind of, that swings my needle, too. I'm going to have you add some marinara sauce to okay. this. What they're asking for is a cup and a quarter. You can eyeball it. You can measure it in there. We're getting our um, garlic and shallot and bacon cooked together. We're even going to add a little cognac into this. Ooh. So if you are starting with ingredients, and you certainly don't have to do this to your marinara sauce, this is a really quick way to get dinner on the table or lunch on the table quickly. But if you do have marinara sauce at home and you want to just kick it up a notch, add something that you would already put into Italian food. Dump it in. That looks great. I'm going to let this cook for a little bit. We're also going to add three tablespoons of light cream and a half ounce of cognac okay. or brandy. Also, I like tripled the amount of pork product in <laughs> marinara It's like garlic. Sauce. You can't have too much. You cannot have too much. And then um, if you put a little cognac in there. Half an ounce? All right. Which, I mean, you could certainly measure it out of a tablespoon. And if you that's get a, a lot, little That's heavy, a lot of math. That's a lot of math, yeah. I did not do math. What did you major in? Uh, I didn't have a major. I didn't get that far. You didn't declare a major? No. I covered you in college. I this remember. is actually how we met. My arms would get tired holding a microphone. On my tippy toes, holding a microphone up like this. If you ever want to know how I'd prefer to interview an NBA player, it's sitting down. Please, just sit down. Another good oh. lesson for folks at home, clean as you go. Makes things a lot easier. I love this. Yes, it does. And it makes it easier for whoever cleans the kitchen after you cook, because hopefully you're not having to Someone do else should be doing that. Yeah, obviously. Um, let's do some zoodles. Okay. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Have you used a spiralizer? I have. I love it, just taking control in the kitchen. So what do you make most often when you are cooking at home? Uh, kind of mix it up. I wouldn't say one thing. Grill a lot, obviously, this time of year, try and get outside. Um, but it, a lot of seafood. Not a ton of pasta. That could just be seasonal, though. Yeah. <laughs> is it, is, are these things that you use out of a recipes out of a cookbook? Do you need some help? Yeah. Sometimes you have to be firm with that. All right. So, like, manhandle that thing. Yes. Now we've got zoodles. I would say 75-25 freestyle cookbook. 75-25 freestyle cookbook. Yeah. Uh, Which kind of sounds like you're Michael Phelps, but <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. No, I mean, I think you learn enough by using the cookbook yeah. to kind of get your foundation, and then when you really got time to plan something out yeah. or special occasion, then you can go consult, okay. consult the experts. 
so then what's, I'm just gonna help. <laughs> These are hard Sorry. to corral. Oh, I broke no, it. no, no, they're just hard to corral. Okay, so then do you watch cooking shows? Do you Google things? Mm -hmm. Are you reading cookbooks? Uh, cookbooks, I would say, cookbooks and Google, mostly. Okay. Um, cooking shows are always kind of on in the background, but I don't, I wouldn't say I get a lot of recipes from those. I just kind of. Except this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's changing. That's obviously changing right now, even as we speak. Um, I'm going to turn our sauce down. Okay, I feel good about this. Annie's cleaning the kitchen. <laughs> you get a gold star for best guess. Thank you. And what I'm going to do is, I know this looks a little unconventional, but if you have these long spirally noodles in the packet, and then you go to eat them afterwards, they get a little bit unruly and unmanageable. So we just kind of made sure that we didn't have a whole bunch of long noodles. And now we're gonna make some foil packets, but I think we should probably take a short break. Okay, we are making foil packets that have summer squash, shrimp, and our little marinara sauce that's been cooking over here. Um, we are now ready. Oh, you can take a sip of wine. You probably need to fortify yourself for what's next. I'm gonna have you kind of like, Give me just a little bit of a bowl shape, kind of. And then dump it all in there. We'll at least coat it. And then recipe calls for 16 shrimp. So you said that you could, you went to the same restaurant in Philadelphia to have your pregame meal. Every day. What was it? Uh, old school Italian spot right off of Washington Square Park, right by Independence Hall. Okay. Uh, I can't remember really the genesis. I think we just stumbled upon it one night, uh, kind of out on the town. Oh, yeah. That's why you're That's wearing black. I know. That's... <laughs> and so you stumbled upon it about town, which had to have been about 2 a.m. No, it was early. It... Oh. Was it an early game? Because this is the no, thing was, about I NBA. Was, I think it was before. Like three I think it was before I even played there. Oh. Um, That's a shocking development. And loved it. You know, frescoes on the wall in the basement. Yeah probably had a mob connection at some point. Um, so just real old school and became friends with the bartender, Boris. And Ooh, that's a great name for a bartender. Great name. He was not Italian. Um, <laughs> and he would bring me my pregame meal uh, every home game. He'd walk it. They'd let him in the apartment building, he'd walk it up, drop it off at the door. <laughs> and when I got traded after about four years there, uh, I didn't really know where to go. I wasn't going to practice, so I went in at lunch and had a couple Manhattans with Boris and kind of an emotional goodbye, and then got the call that I had to hop on a plane that night, so it was scrambling, but last meal, officially last meal in Philly. Um, I'm gonna have you help me divvy this up. Okay. Here, I'm gonna make, yeah. You got it? Got it. You're stronger than I am. So you're gonna fold it up kind of Hershey Kiss style. We're trying to get, so when you do something in foil, a couple of things. One, it's fun, it's easy cleanup, but you're trying to create steam inside of it. So I'm gonna seal that part, and I do want a little bit of steam to come out of the top. So that's gonna go like that. That's gonna go Yours like that. This looks a lot better, I don't know. <laughs> you didn't give me enough foil. I, I'm not sure it's my fault. And then this goes into a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes. Obviously you are known for basketball. Was it hard to follow in your uncle's footsteps or to have the name that you had, the size that you had, and just kind of know that that's, like you were a local kid, you go to UW, you, there's some expectations there. Yeah, I don't think so. I think I always had an irrational confidence even before, even before I got, was actually good. And then when I hit my growth spurt and kind of learned how to run again and jump and dribble and everything else, um, it came together pretty quickly. Uh, I think like my sophomore years when I had my big jump. And then, you know, like I said, once I got coordinated again, it was, <laughs> started making sense. I like that. Irrational confidence. Yeah, it's the best kind. Best and worst, if you can channel it. We are going to play virtual master 
chef. I'm gonna give you five ingredients, you just tell me what you would do with them. Although knowing now what I know before I made this list, I maybe didn't make this hard enough. All right. Okay, you ready? Tomatoes, thyme, onions, mozzarella, phyllo dough. What was the last one? Phyllo dough. I don't even know what that is. Um, <laughs> along the lines of a puff pastry, uh, you would get it in the frozen section. It's in a lot of Greek foods, okay. like a spanakopia. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So it's flaky, um, like a pastry type of. So then I'd probably, can I have some olive oil? Yes. Okay. I'd probably chop everything up and stuff it into the filo, filo, filo dough, uh, and make a little puff pastry out of it. Was that the answer you were hoping for? I was just I seeing how curious and how in interesting and and uh, adventurous you were in the Can kitchen. Can we fry it? You could fry Let's it. Let's try that. that. Would be delicious. Yeah. Almost like samosas at that yeah. point. Yeah. All right, we're on to something. Think you are on to something. Okay, we have just checked our foil packets. There's still about four minutes or so to go, which means that our conversation has continued. I know that you do play in pickup basketball games on occasion, especially for charity. What can you still do on the court at the same level, close or near the same level you did as a pro? Shoot and pass. Hmm. Yeah. Do you shoot often? I try to. Really? I mean, like, oh, no, no, like, like do you practice? Shoot. Yeah. Uh, no, not, not, as, not much anymore. Um, when I was still trying to make a uh, comeback, I was every day still kind of trying to stay in the routine. And then I got to the point where I was just like, all right, phone's not ringing. <laughs> you got you to gotta find something more productive to do. What did keep you going through that? Because you, you did have a couple of different yeah. comeback um, efforts, attempts. I wanted to beat my uncle. He had 10 years, and I wanted to beat my uncle. And, I, I mean, I loved the game. I wanted to keep playing. Uh, I thought I could. I had a, My knee was bugging me a lot. I had an operation. Kind of thought that was going to be my sign, and then came back, and it felt a lot better. So I was like, all right, we'll give it another shot. But when it stops ringing, it stops ringing. How long did it take you to transition into, I don't want to say civilian life, but normal life? Uh, it was a while. I'd say probably two years-ish to just stop beating myself up about it and kind of, there's not, there was no one moment where you're like, all right, let it go. It's kind of a, you know, culmination of a lot of reflection and whatnot. But I would say after the second year, um, getting back and, and after I'd gone to the G League and done that, when, when that didn't do it, I would say that that was the point where I was like, all right, it's but, time. But why were you beating yourself up? Just because I thought I could still do it. Actually, I'd say I knew I could still do it. It just wasn't happening. Hmm. Who was the funniest teammate you played with? Funniest teammate? Intentionally or not? <laughs> That's the second time I've gotten that question. Uh, give me both answers. Uh, the most unintentionally funny, I'd say, probably Nick Young, Swaggy P. Hmm. Um, he just had a way of getting laughs out of people. And then funniest, while trying to be funny, probably not even close, Blake Griffin. Really? Yeah. I mean, he does stand up. He's just, he's, I'm still looking for a thing that he's not better at than most people, but. He does stand up. Yeah. Regularly. Or just I don't in know about of regularly, the but no, no, no. He's like just... he's done stand up in LA. He'll host SNL one day. Really, you heard it here first, kids. Sorry, breaking news. Um, also, here's another piece of breaking news. This is actually taking place in real time at my house, and you may or may not notice the modern art that's being created Look at behind that. us. It's like a Banksy. <laughs> it's like a Banksy. We're going to auction that piece off for a lot of money, but actually, the outside of the house is being painted. So if you the notice. Backdrop's changing. What's happening? Well, it doesn't often do that in real time, but today. Here we are. It does. Okay, our foil packets Grand reveal. are done. In theory, cleanup is easy. Everything is taken care of in there. Pretty simple. I think it's pretty simple. I think it's also smoking hot. So here's what I would do. I would open this up just a little bit so we can kind of cool the, yeah. I would kind of um, slow that cooking process a little bit. I would not attempt to try that at the moment. 
Sauce is good. That's good. Must be the shallots. That's a real, that's, <laughs> the shallots were definitely it. Um, something tells me you have not moved very far away from basketball. What are you working on these days? We have a project called Hangar 2 that we're working on and taking a couple of the World War II era hangars at Magnuson and getting them kind of gutted and then refitted as a huge indoor turf field and then a bunch of basketball courts and some area for STEM and other uh, academic opportunities. So we're chugging away with that, working on all the kind of stuff behind the scenes. It's not a lot of fun, but part of the process to try and get it, get the dream to come to fruition. I'm gonna unceremoniously do this, which is probably gonna splatter. Would you like some Parmesan yes, please. cheese? Okay. More the merrier. How's that? That's good. Should we try it? Yep. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if I can get all the flavors on a forkful without making a mess. Or burning my face off. Burning with the top roof of your mouth. The other one. Mm. That'll work for dinner. Yeah. And the zoodles are a great consistency. I always struggle with that. Adding them too early to the sauce, mm. not, they're too al dente, they're too overly cooked, and then they turn into mush. This is, I learned a new trick here today. There you go. All you have to do is put it in a foil packet. And I think if we were to take a sip of the wine with our food, I think you would find all of those flavors go pretty well together. Pretty good pairing. Do we nail it? Great call. I think we nailed it. Congrats on making a fantastic dinner. Thank you. Thank you for the recipe. Absolutely. You did all the hard work. That's, just that's not true. I just shop, chopped the shallot. And that's did not some true. Zoodles. He's got a backache now. I have a neck ache from looking up at him. He's got a backache from having to chop on a short counter. So we're both going to do some stretches. But it has been so fun to cook with friends. We love being able to come together and have conversations and laughs. But we know that that is not possible for everybody. In fact, food is a problem for a lot of people in the community, which is why. For every episode of I Cook, You Measure, a donation is being made to a nonprofit working to end food insecurity in our community. A huge thank you, a toll thank you, a toll thank you to Spencer for joining us. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Obviously, you're known for baseball. <laughs> no, obviously. Uh, <laughs> a little more wine. <laughs> Hold up. Um, I Cook You Measure is presented by Ascend Hospitality Group, a black and female-led independent restaurant group based in Bellevue, Washington. The collection of concepts proudly employs more than 700 people in Washington, Oregon, Utah, and Arizona. Committed to elevating the communities it serves, AHG invests wholly in both its team members and its guests to take service to the next level. Learn more at ascendhg.com.